record. I know, I know. Wilma knows that I am not good at turning on the recording. However, and I had my uh, finger on the button in case you forgot. <laughs> I know. I've successfully turned it on twice now. So, you know, um, I, I, I win on the day. Um, if you have any issues with, uh, with video or audio or a big blue button generally, just drop a comment in the chat and we will do our best to assist. So uh, with that, let me, uh, let me turn the presentation over to Dave Wiedemann to get us started. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. I am trying to turn my video on and it says webcam not found, no supported camera profile. So I don't think that's going to work. So I hope it's okay if I go cameraless. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having us. Uh, and thank you to the, the project team. I'm Dave Wiedemann, and big thank you to the Sakai community alongside who have been sponsoring this work for a couple of years. Um, we are going to talk, we're going to go to the next slide. We're going to talk today a little bit about our project, the Open Source Health Factors Project, a survey that we developed and gave to the Sakai community last month, um, give you a little bit of the background on the survey and some of the early results of the survey. And then we're gonna shift into what we call the three ponderables, which we think are the big questions that are raised by the survey data. If you were at the lightning round uh, at 1250, just an hour ago, you would have seen these. So they're coming back, same three ponderables, but the, the difference in this presentation, the lightning round is that we'll have a chance to engage with you around those questions and take, get your help making sense of the data the survey gave us. Um, and so that's basically our plan for the day. As Josh said, we might not have breakouts, um, but, but we'll have some kind of discussion around those ponderables. Um, with that, we can move on. That's our plan. Okay. So the Health Factors Project, give you a little background. We can go to the next slide. Basically, the, yes, there we go. The uh, Open Source Health Factors Project kind of has one goal, one primary goal, and that's to answer the first question. What makes an open source community healthy? And we have a particular definition uh, of health and for the organizational context, then we think healthy means that the community takes care of its people, does its work well, endures and thrives. That's a healthy organization, healthy open source community. So our primary goal is to ask what, what helps them, an organization be healthy? Our secondary goal is to measure how do you figure that out? How do you measure that if you have it? And, and this is how we've gone about it. Here's our, pri our project timeline. Thank you for advancing. Um, we've been working on this a couple of years. Uh, first phase was basically a lit review of open source research and the research on um, healthy organizations, organizational development research. We did a phase of observations and interviews with members of the Sakai community. You may, if you're from the Sakai community, you may have seen us sitting in the back in meetings and things like that and asking a lot of questions. From those two data sets, we identified nine factors that we thought would be key to healthy organizations, and we grouped those in three categories. So we're going to share the categories and the factors with you in a minute. Um, from those factors and categories, we developed a survey designed to you know, test whether those factors were present in an organization. Um, the survey we, we um, developed and tested um, over the last few months, and we've just now started rolling out the, the tested version of the survey for actual use in rural organizations, and we and we and we implemented it in the Sakai community last month. So we have data from that. Um, last phase, these last two phases, you can see them as cyclical. Uh, we expect to do a deployments, refinements, deployments, kind of in perpetuity as we go forward and and, and use the, the tool and and get better at using the tool. Um, the first data are really interesting, as you'll see. So we think there's a future there. If you're a member of an open source community uh, and you're interested in using this survey with your community, let us know. Just want to throw that pitch in there because we're looking for people to try it out. I think we can move on. The next slide. So here's an overview of the survey that we developed. It's an online survey. It's got 41 overall questions. 31 of those questions are really the meat. And they're asking uh, multiple choice questions about that, that get us data on those nine factors that I mentioned, and we'll show you what those are in a minute. There's seven multiple choice demographic questions because it's important to know who's in the community uh, as well. And then uh, one of the really interesting things about this survey is it's multi, it's mixed methods. So there are these three questions at the end that are open-ended. 
that we invite uh, survey takers to tell us all kinds of things. And we get really interesting, rich data. We're going to share some of that with you. Um, that the, the quick questions are, what's, what do you like about your community? What's one thing you would change? And what else do you have to tell us? So you can imagine the kind of responses that we get from that are really interesting. Um, the particular administration of the survey one month ago um, was the Sakai community uh, over the week, September 21 to October 15th, and we had 31 responses, 70% uh, completion rate, and it took people about six, six minutes. So it's a pretty accessible online survey that you can do pretty quickly, which is, which is one of the goals that we had. I think we can move on to the next slide. Um, okay, so a little bit of results. We're going to share the categories and the factors um, from the survey, so we can just jump right to the next slide. Here we go. So what did the Sakai community tell us about itself uh, when they took this survey? Um, and so you're seeing here what we call the categories. These are the highest level, the highest level themes that we make, that we organize when we look at the data. And the three categories are listed in the left column. We give them a color code because in the next slide, we're going to code the, the factors by category so you can know how they relate back to these. For the record, uh, the colors match the first letter of the category. People is purple, task is teal, organization is orange. Um, the basic idea of the category is phrased as a question in the third column. And then in the fourth column here, you see, of course, the results. This is what fourth column is what the, the community told us in response to these questions. And we uh, plotted those means on a scale of one to 100 to make them a little bit easier to parse. And uh, we think a score over 80 um, is an excellent sign. A uh, score in the 60 to 79 range means it's pretty decent, but there might be a, a few little improvements you can make. And a score below 59 means that there's probably a, a more serious situation that you need to look into. So in the, do we take care of our people? Yes, we do really well at taking care of our people. That's what the results from our survey showed. Um, task, how well are we coordinate in our work? Pretty good. Maybe there's a couple places we can get better in that category and same for organization. Pretty good overall, maybe a few places to change. So what we're looking at is a pretty healthy organization at the highest level, particularly good at taking care of people. We can move on to the next slide. Um, these are the nine factors. So these are nine more specific focus areas that we think are related to organizational health. So we're specifically testing for these. The factor name is down in the left column. The, the uh, category code is the color there. So purple equals people, teal equals task, so on. And then the basic idea, again, of the factor is phrased as a question in the third column. And then the means, again, uh, rank, uh, plotted on a zero to hundred scale, just as before. And what we're doing here is looking from, we've got these ranked from uh, most positive to the least positive. And you can see big picture, they're all pretty good, right? So we're looking at a uh, pretty, pretty healthy organization across these factors. Healthier things are at the top. And as we get bound, as we move into the yellows, you can assume that in that factor, there's an area or two of improvement. And as we move further down the screen, Maybe there's a couple more areas of improvement for the design factor than for the problem solving factor. So that, that's kind of the overall look of these things. And so just I can explain a couple of these if we have questions, but um, basically we're looking at uh, the top two factors being really strong. So does the culture support learning? It's a, cult it's a community that prioritizes learning and puts things in place to make sure that learning works, happens, supported taken seriously, relatedness. Is connection and community emphasized? Yeah, that, that the read is that the community is connectedness, connectedness, relatedness, community, really important in the Sakai community. So those things are just jumping off the charts. 82 is a really high score. And then in terms of these other factors, problem solving, can we solve problems and work out issues? Do we make good decisions? We're still pretty healthy in these areas. Can people say what they think? Generally, yeah. But in the yellow areas, of course, there's probably a, a nuance or two that we could improve on. Um, can the lowest score, of course, is organizational design. That's a category where we're trying to see, does the design of the organization, the structure that you use, the assumption it makes about how work is done, does that match the actual work in the context? Do we have a good design? Do we, do we have... Um, 
So we have, we have, have we conceived of an organization that matches the work and the need that it's trying to do and the people that work in it? So that, there's a hint there that we can maybe tweak some function, some aspect of organizational design to improve. Um, so, uh, so that's the, that's the one, one over lightly of this scale. Um, why don't we, why don't we move on, but we, we can come back to this later in the discussion area. We have a lot of, well, I think we'll have time to, to, to dip into this. So, oh yes, here we are at the ponderable. So this is the point where, so we've, we, of course, when we were looking at the data, we had the, the three categories, we had the nine factors, plus we had all 41 questions. And so what we did was look across all that data set. Um, and some of us were members of the community and so brought their own experience working in the community to see and looking across all that, we looked for the three biggest questions that kind of leapt out as, at us as things that the Sakai community might want to take into consideration, think about and chew on. We call these the ponderables. And to discuss these, I'm gonna pass it over to Josh, my colleague, Josh. All right, let me take you through the ponderables. So um, we've got a decision to make in a few minutes after we take a quick look at these uh, as to whether we break out or whether we stay in a full group. And uh, if so, which of the ponderables we choose to tackle? So uh, you can you can chew on that for a moment while we take a look at the three ponderable questions. So from our read of the quantitative and the qualitative data, we came to these three questions as areas in which the Sakai community could look to improve. And so there, there are these three ponderable questions and they're, they're not easy, right? If it were easy, we would have done this already. Um, and the, the data isn't, the data aren't a hundred percent, uh, black and white clear about what to do. So there are multiple interpretations and that's part of going to, that's part of what we're going to discuss today. So very much looking forward to your feedback on these ponderable questions. So, and here they are, how could we get better at hearing varying perspectives and resolving differences? That's one of them. Another. How could we get better at distributing workload and managing burnout? And a third, how could we get better at ensuring strategy and coordination? So let's take a look at these three in some more depth. So for those of you who were at the lightning talk earlier today, you saw two of these data points, but there are more. So this is a deeper dive into each ponderable. So for this first ponderable, how can we get better at hearing varying perspectives and resolving differences? We pulled out six quantitative data points and one theme from the qualitative data. So what have we got here? And these are these are organized from uh, lowest mean to highest mean. So as we look at three of these, the three on the bottom, we value a wide range of perspectives. We provide honest feedback to each other and I feel accepted in our community. Those have fairly high means. Um, they're, they're above an 80, an, 80, an 80 mean on a scale of uh, one to 100. So we consider those to be uh, in good shape. The other three are between 65 and 79, which we consider to be areas that are uh, needing some improvement. So there, there, are, there is one measure that is below 65 and those are you know below 65, 64 and below are, are uh, areas in which we consider there needs to be significant improvement. Um, None of these are in this particular ponderable. So, so the good news is we value a wide range of perspectives. We provide honest feedback. Uh, people feel accepted. So th those, those are good things. Uh, slightly more challenging. Uh, do we know what to do when a disagreement occurs? Well, maybe a little bit less so. Uh, do we address important issues even when they make us uncomfortable? Or maybe a little even less than that. Uh, when an incident involving prejudice occurs, uh, do we know how to address it? Uh, the mean there was a 63 that that particular measure was ranked 29 out of the 31 measures that we have in the instrument. So, uh, not, you know, not bad, uh, but not as great as maybe we want it to be. And so we've marked in gray, two of these particular data points that, uh, are interesting in combination, although there's lots to be said about, uh, these data points as we look at them together. But if we consider that we do a fairly good job in providing honest feedback to each other but a slightly less good job in addressing important issues when they make us uncomfortable. There's some interesting tension there. And what do we make of that? You know, how do we understand that tension and what do we do about it? 
So that is uh, that is one uh, approach to this set of ponderables. And I wanted to share out also uh, what's called down here at the bottom, the illustrative quotation. This is one of the themes that came out strongly in the open-ended questions. Uh, the one thing I value in our community is the willingness, the willingness to listen to all viewpoints. So uh, this aligns very well with the idea of being good at providing honest feedback. So we listen, but then what do we do after having listened? And I think that's, that's a key question to think about here. Let's move on to ponderable number two. How can we get better at distributing workload and managing burnout? So here again, we have six measures. Uh, two are in the green, three are in the yellow, one is in the red. This, this red measure is the uh, 31st ranked of, of 31 measures. So let's, and let's take a look at these. I have a say in what I do in our community. And a mean of 86 in the green. Our community meet, our community leaders meet regularly, 83 also in the green. So those two things we do a pretty good job with, according to these respondents. Uh, slightly less good. Our meetings are productive. Um, our community work ratio is 10% of the people do 100% of the work. So work well, well distributed, uh, maybe not so much. Um, not awful, but not great. We pause to reflect even less great. And our community has low levels of burnout. Uh, this one's a challenging thing. Uh, you know, so it, as we look at this and we consider we meet regularly, we have generally productive meetings, but yet people are somewhat burnt out in a way that might be concerning. What do we do with that? Um, we don't really pause to reflect as much as we ought to. It's not awful, but it's not great. And, uh, you know, what does that have to do with, with burnout? What does that say about the productivity of our meetings? Um, so interesting things to think about here. Let's take a look at the third ponderable. How can we get better at ensuring strategy and coordination? So uh, five points of measurement here, plus one theme. So, one of these points of measurement is in the green. We have a strategic plan with a mean of 83. Uh, next after that, our community leaders share a clear vision, 76. Okay, so we do pretty well with a strategic plan, but possibly not quite as well in, in sharing the vision that that plan lays out. That's kind of an interesting tension right there. The other three measures have more to do with coordination than with strategy. I know who's responsible for what. Our procedures keep things organized. I have the resources I need to do what I need to do in our community. So these are all roughly at the same level uh, between a 72.5 and a 71.4. And they, they indicate that, you know, our coordination and organization as a community is decent, but not top of the scale. So what do, what do we do about that? And what, if anything, does that have to do with uh, the clarity of the vision that we share? And what does it mean, uh, you know, our slightly less than optimal coordination in the context of a strategic plan that we consider to be fairly well done and, and useful to guide us? You know, what's, what, what's, what's missing here? Clearly there's something. And let's take a look at the, uh, at the theme from the qualitative data as well. I like and appreciate the people in the community, but have little understanding of the organization itself, current projects in progress, or strategies used in prioritizing work. So interesting. Um, this in my mind speaks a bit to the clarity of the vision, but also to the coordination. So it'll be interesting to see what people think of that. So these are the three ponderables and our plan was to break you up into groups and have each group tackle one of the ponderables with one of the project team members serving as a facilitator. So uh, the, the project team member would facilitate and the project team member would report out. So your job is really just to think hard and be thoughtful and reflective in your breakout session. So we can still perform those roles. The question is, uh, do we break out at all or do we not? So uh, let me ask you this question. So if you would like to stay in a large group, and not break out, um, we have uh, maybe seven or eight of us. Martin says 10 people that aren't on the project team. If you would like to stay in one large group, would you drop a plus one in the chat, please? If you'd like to stay in one large group, drop a plus one in the chat.
early returns favor staying in a large group. Do we, does the lake house get extra points? <laughs> no, the lake house shares a single vote. <laughs> okay, Sorry, guys. Just checking. <laughs> one owl, one vote, people. All right, four out of 10 are in favor of not breaking out. Do I hear any other opinions? Probably ought to ask the question the other way. If Does you want anyone to strongly out. object to not yeah, breaking there. out? There you go. Going once, going twice. All right, it sounds like we are going to be in a large group, which is perfectly fine. Uh, let me return then to the list of ponderables. So if we're in one group, we have to pick a ponderable to uh, to think about. So here are your three choices. So what I would ask is that if you have an opinion about which ponderable to tackle, would you drop the number of that ponderable in the chat, please? Jackie says three. Hansen says three. Any other opinions? Got a few more people typing. Three. All right. Um, does anyone have a different opinion? Does anyone feel strongly about addressing one of the other ponderables? Going once, going twice. All right, let's let's tackle number three. So um, let's see here. So here is here is our set of data for number three, and it was our plan to take some notes while you guys chat. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, open up the notes document um, and maybe I can ask. Um, so Josh, I'll, I've got it open. I can, I can take excellent. notes if you like. All right, I will, uh, I'll drop the link in the, in the chat so you guys can feel free to see the notes document as it's being built out. Oh, I need to adjust permissions, sorry about that. Uh, so don't follow that link just yet. Josh, there were a couple of guiding questions in the we were going to use in the breakouts. I think they were, I'm trying to remember them and put them in the Yeah, they what were. Does, what do the data mean? Yeah, what do, what sense do we make of these data? There we go. And then what ah, there it is. How what 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 can we do about that? What does the data say and what can we do about that? How might we as make a computer? How might we improvements? I'm typing in the chat to find so we have a record. All right. So as so these are the two big questions. What do the data say and how how might we as a community make improvements? So let's return to the data for number three while we have those three things in, in, in our minds. Um I'm I'm curious as we start off. Um, let's uh, let's prime the pump a tiny bit. I, I wonder if the other project team members have any initial reactions to the data points that we pulled out in in Ponderable Three. You know, so I think maybe uh, let's let's ask for opinions from the project team members, and then let's open the floor to opinions from others. I reckon this is where you want me to say something. Sure. Um, I, I think you already said it quite well, Josh, but the juxtaposition of those two that have the arrows beside them, we have a strategic plan and you've been doing a good job, particularly Josh, of you know touting the roadmap and so forth. Um, you've, you've dropped into many community meetings and talked about them, had one-on-one -on -one conversations and so forth. And yet our community leaders share a clear vision, doesn't score so well. So, what it makes me curious about is, does this mean we have a plan, but we're unclear what it means? We have a plan, but we haven't shared it so well. What does this mean? I, I you know, this, that's, this, that's one of the reasons, folks, that we, uh, we thought this would be a good ponderable, because we're not quite sure what it means, or at least I'm not. 
Dave, Wilma, what, what do you think? Oh, hi. Um, yeah, there's the contradiction inherent in those two that we highlighted, but I also thought the other three were a little low um, as well. Um, so you'd think, I know who is responsible for what in our community. At 18, that's below halfway on the ranking. Um, so it's one of the lower um, points. And, and that's, a, for me, that's a kind of a test of how coordinated people are. You need to know what roles are, who to ask to do things. And, and then the procedures question. So uh, the second and third rows are ones that get my attention as uh, being kind of, you want your procedures to keep things organized, organized but they're number 21 ranked overall, it's pretty low. There's also a good point from the Lake House that, that the one about visions could be that there are actually multiple, possibly even competing visions. So that's that's a good start. Uh, Lake House, do you want to you want to follow up on that, and then we'll open the floor to uh, to everyone. Lake House is quiet. Oh, the Lake House is on listen only. Most of folks are on listen only. I'm finding, and it's it's oh, tough yeah. to switch. That's going to be an interesting challenge. Uh -huh. um, well, it's a good thing we have a chat, right? <laughs> The lake house has no microphone, but you had an owl. You had an owl earlier. Um, lake house notes, not sharing a clear vision might mean there are zero clear visions or there are three clear visions. Yes, very true. It's a very good point. Um, so uh, lake house and others that have, well, actually, so let's, uh, let's put a pin in that for a second and let's, let's come back to that. And Dave, you know, let's help, help me make sure I, I come back to that. Um, so. I'm cute. There goes the lake house. They're offline now. So others that are in the room, um, what takeaways do you see here? Uh, what do what do these data mean before we dive into the the related question of what we might do about it? How do how do you interpret these? Feel free to drop your interpretations in the chat, or feel free if you'd rather to. Uh, you know, leave the room and come back and turn on your microphone. That's also fine so that you can, you can speak up if you'd like to. Yeah, that's what the lake house did. They dropped out and turned their mic on and came back in. So good job. Yeah, I know. I sent the lake house away. Oh, here they come. Yeah, you may not have, you may not, you may rue the day that you invited the lake house to turn its microphone on. I, I already rue the day, Dr. Chuck. All we're right. just like six people all in a circle. We're eating snacks and drinking cider, and we want to be entertained. Well, we we, we do our best over here at uh, at Sakai Virtual Conference HQ. Angelia notes: Is there a disconnect between the overall strategic plan and the visions of each project team? Interesting. Um, that that in some ways uh, seems to be something similar to the the idea of possibly three clear visions. Um, what do what, what what do others think? What 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 else? Uh, who else uh, thinks that there might be multiple clear visions going on? That that's you know who who else buys that interpretation? Oh, we can talk about our procedures that keep things organized may also be an indicator that there is a disconnect. Yep. Yep. That, that is true. Um, so I, I'm kind of curious, you know, folks who are active members of the, of the Sakai community and attend a bunch of these meetings. So that's the Lake house people. That's, uh, Eduardo, uh, uh, Wanjo, um, and I, I suppose, uh, Wilma and Martin and me. Um, so. You know, what is, do, what's, what's the way I want to articulate this? Um, are we, those of us who are in lots of these meetings, 
uh, seeing multiple visions being articulated? Gosh, this is Chris at the lake house. I'm wondering if some of this is maybe uh, some of the stuff like looked at as practical and some as aspirational, maybe. Could be. It could be. Um, Constance notes in the chat that there are multiple visions. I mean, I, I could see it, right? Even the roadmap process would uh, lend itself to a slight lack of clarity. I mean, so yes, we're, we're, we're laying out our priorities in the roadmap, but we have, uh, there's so many things that we want to get done, you know, that I could see that that, you know, that larger list might in and of itself produce a lack of clarity. That's not working out. No, now it is. It was going to the TV. Mike was, Mike was Dave, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I mean, you, you've observed us as, as an outsider. You know, do, do you see multiple, did you see multiple competing visions when you were observing at, at the pre-pandemic Sakai camp? Um, you know, I may have. I mean, there were, yes. <laughs> I think I saw people trying to decide what vision, the vision was. Uh, there were moments where, uh, People were trying to figure out, you know, they were thinking about the design of Sakai and the, what it was going to look like. Um, we were trying to decide whether to add functionality that one school had developed or not. There was a big deal. Uh, Dr. Chuck was proposing something, um, and we were thinking about that. So, yeah, I think that this, the camp that I watched was, was a place where multiple visions were being considered. What other thoughts do people have about uh, this particular tension before we turn to uh, issues of coordination? Martin writes, is it possible that visions are focused and smaller? Each group has its own smaller vision, but it isn't the grand vision. I suppose the corollary there is that, uh, you know, this, this item talks about a clear vision, but maybe to your point, there isn't one. There are multiple interlocking visions. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to, I mean, I think it was Angelia who suggested that it may be, or, or well, no, it even goes further back than that in the thread, that there are different visions. And maybe it's just because they're smaller, kind of focused on the thing we know. I don't know, just trying to suss this out. Lake House, I just muted you because uh, you've got a bunch of people there, but feel free to unmute when you have stuff to say. Yeah, I think that if you, I think we are going to always have multiple visions. And the problem, I think, is with the word vision, right? If if what we were was a television company and, and we were building television, what's the vision for televisions in the next five years? That's a simple problem. We are, we're many things. And to say, where's the grand vision? The, the grand vision is to be the best LMS for learning, and I don't think there's any, there's any question that that's not our vision, right? So, the, so to say that the product has a vision, that there is one product, that there is one vision, I, I just, I think we shouldn't beat ourselves up about this. What we have is a lot of different visions, and, and these visions are not themselves in conflict. And then we come together, and then what we produce is the sum total of a series of visions and passions and top priorities and my top priority might be different than earl's top priority but i'm sure glad that earl's top priority is what it is because i'm really glad we have ignite and earl's going to be really glad when we have sakai plus and to say that whoa how come chuck and earl don't have the same share of vision we'd be crazy to try to vote between whether my vision is more or less important than earl's vision because all these visions are important and if you're just looking on the side you're like whoa Earl seems to care a lot about this, and Chuck seems to care a lot about that. Are they fighting? And the answer is no, we're not fighting, right? But we're just not one thing. That's that's just, I just don't like the question. I'm sorry. It's a dumb question. <laughs> um, so, and it's, it's important to remember, right, that this, um, this project is uh, not in its infancy, uh, not in its toddler state. Uh, maybe it's past preschool into kindergarten, you know, so the... Uh, the first uh, large administration of, of this instrument is with the Sakai community as, as the sponsor of the instrument. 
So it, there are definitely, there may very well be improvements to the, the, this instrument. As I, from a methodological perspective, as I look at this question, it might be a little on the broken side. It's certainly measuring two things, right? Uh, how effectively a vision is shared and the clarity of the vision. And it could be that that's muddling things. Um, on, on the other hand, you could look at and say, well, you know, to Dr. Chuck's point, we have multiple visions, multiple visions are being articulated. So maybe it's a good thing that uh, this particular item is, has a mean of 76, which is relatively, which is like halfway up the scale. It's fairly close to being 80 and not being a, not being a problem as we've, as we've considered these results. So, uh, you know, this, this might be a good story as opposed to a not good story, but I definitely think that it probably bears some additional testing and some additional look at, at it from a methodological perspective. So it is, it, it's 2.30. Uh, this session runs for another 10 minutes or so. So, um, so let's turn to the coordination measures. Um, so I have the resources I need to do what I, I have the resources I need to do what I need to do in our community. Our procedures keep things organized. I know who is responsible for what in our community. So these are all at roughly the same level. They're all between uh, 71 and a half and 72 and a half, give or take a little tiny bit. They're toward the bottom of the 31 points of measurement. You know, the ranks range from 18 to 23. So they're roughly at the same level. They're sort of, they're in the uh, needs a little bit of improvement category. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts about what these data might mean? How do, how do we interpret these? I'm waiting for folks to drop your nuggets of wisdom in the chat. I'll just wait you out. See, Martin is typing. I'm sure others of you are, are considering. Interesting. Martin notes that uh, his personal experience is that we actually have good processes, but a lot of people don't know about it. So maybe solid processes, possibly poorly communicated or more poorly than, than we would like. And Martin notes JIRA as an example. The Lake House is typing. I mean, just to follow up with that with a verbal. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. So Lake, Lake House, what, what do you have to say about uh, great processes that are possibly undercommunicated? Do you buy the undercommunicated part? I don't even buy, I don't even buy undercommunicated. No? <laughs> I mean, I think we have great processes. I think the roadmap process is great. I think our UX design process is great. You know, I, I've been in this project a long time, and I've seen us when we had some really lousy processes. And I am super proud of the processes we have right now. And so I, I find it hard to criticize what we're doing, right? But the interesting thing is, is the processes that I think are the best are not single vision oriented, highly coordinated oriented, where we're picking. Because that's what we used to do, is we used to try to like vet different priorities and tell people to stop working on, you, you know, Earl, stop working on Ignite because we took a vote and LTI is more important than Ignite. And we would do that stuff in 2004, 2005, 2006. And now we just say, let's just see what everyone's doing and everyone's making the product better. And so the roadmap is a great process because when in doubt, we use the roadmap. Other, there's other things that sort of get done just because they got to get done. You know, Sam goes and fixes Samago performance. He doesn't wait for a roadmap entry for that. And um, and so that's why I mean so I'm not being facetious when I say when I say we have great processes. I think we do have great processes, and uh, I know that because I've seen situations where the processes are far less great than what we do. And you can always improve, and you can always criticize, and you can always complain. But we have great processes, I think. So, Dr. Oh, Chuck, let me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. I was just going to say, in the spirit of continuous improvement, though. You know, I mean, our processes are, you know, 
are never so great that they can't bear some some fine tuning and some improvement. I, you know, that would be that, that's, that's 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 my thought there, Martin. Go ahead. Say, say well, because I'm it's it's probably because of the where I happen to sit, where I'm reaching out to non academic institutions all the time. I mean, we probably do we're probably doing an average of three to four demos a week for organizations that most of y'all wouldn't have heard of. I never heard of them before, but they're interested in Sakai. But when I tell them the story, Dr. Chuck, that essentially you could propose an improvement to Sakai, here's how you do it. It's the JIRA thing, you know, and I talk, I try to communicate how you do that. And then there's this group of people that meet weekly and look at that and decide, you know, wh where are we going to try to deploy the resources? And then I also think about how we have, um, oh, this, it's just sort of a network uh, of, of people who are working on things. You know, you think about what University of Dayton's working on and it just, you know, it's it's lovely. I agree with you, Chuck. We have great processes, but I just feel like people don't know about them much because they would go, wow, that's just, that's fantastic. Uh, more than they do. They might kind of go, I don't get it. So I don't know. I'm agreeing with you, but not. <laughs> well, I'll, so I, I will say that we, we have problems communicating everything that we are and everything that we do to the people you're you're talking about, right? Those people walk into you and you have to start from scratch and you have to create the entire narrative, Martin, in those situations. That's right. And, and part of what we need to do from uh, like the marketing, part of the reason we went to Educause is to talk to strangers and tell them our story and then watch their reaction and adjust our story. And, and what I'm saying is part of the reason that we went to Educause this year and we didn't go to Educause four years ago is I didn't have feel like I, there was a story worth spending $10,000 to go talk to some strangers about. But I think today we do and, and, and next year and the year after because we've turned a corner yeah, right. We turned a heck of a corner at this point inside Sakai in terms of, you know, the kinds of things that we're spending time on are the kinds of things that are really advancing us, not just like digging out of the hole that we got stuck in mm -hmm. um, for a long time. But we now can see people talking about things like rolled up rubrics. I don't even know what that is, but the fact that we can talk about that and not like have a panic attack talking about it. <laughs> means that we're different right yeah and and for, for to talk for hear david's talk about we just use suki everywhere like we didn't always have that and so yeah. the point is is i think that when we say communication we got to be careful i believe martin our communication to you is probably okay but yeah to oh, the I, I, it people yeah. it we we don't communicate at all and so i think what we have to do is we have to communicate to people that are not in our family but I think we got good processes. I got think we got good at communication internally, and it is time to communicate that externally. And that's why marketing is so important and it has been growing for the past 18 months, like by leaps and bounds. Our marketing to people that we don't already know has been growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah. But the open source health factors, I think really is talking more about internal stuff. Not, not, not how are we doing as a company engaging the market, but how are we talking to each other? And again, I give us, you know, an A minus it works and you can always do better, but we're certainly not a C in any of these things. And when we have been a C, if you, you go back to 2007, we were an F minus in all these areas. And I think Dr. Chuck, that the, the, the data would bear you out, you know, so what we're seeing in these results is definitely not C performance uh, with the exception of burnout. Uh, that that I think is a is a C performance. The rest of these are, uh, you know, many of these are strongly B plus A minus, and several of them are, are in the A range. You know, so you know, so the question is, you know, how do we, you know, what are the little tweaks that we need to make in some of these areas to, you know, do a little better to maybe, you know, communicate a little bit better, you know, in the the outer reaches, you know, so so that the third cousins know what they need to know right because they're they're not at the core of the family necessarily or they're not in every family conversation there are many things there are many things that we are still see at but they're not on this screen true true right so this screen of strategy and coordination which we've been talking about for a while that's not our weakness at least internally 
I mean, our weakness is gaining new people. Our weakness is, you know, and if we were to if we were to switch this to a strategic conversation rather than an assessment of Dave's, you know, set of questions to ask to any open source project, which is kind of what we're doing here. But this thing only goes so far. It can't tell us what we should be doing strategically. And, you know, maybe we should start talking about that, which was Laura's old blue sky thing, right? But we'll name it differently. We'll call it gray sky. <laughs> well, I think, I think you're right. I mean, the, the intent of, of this was not to produce something that would tell us what to do. But right. to provide it's us to measure high level data that would help us figure out, you know, where to where yeah. to place our efforts and, you know, where to where to think about what we need to do next. Um, and I think it's done a good job of that as long as we are looking at ourselves internally and not how to win in the market. Yep. This is not a survey about how to win in the market. This is a survey about uh, places where we have squeaky, squeaky things that need to be smoothed out. Places where we're, we're, we're stepping on ourselves, you know, and, and slowing ourselves down by stepping on our own toes. And I think we don't do that as much as we did in the past. And we just keep getting better and better at that. So it is it is 2.41 p.m., 41 minutes past the hour. We're a minute past our, our times. So we probably ought to be wrapping up here. Um, this, this has been, uh, this was not the conversation I anticipated. I was thinking like lots more people talking. Uh, in some ways, this has been a few of us who are deep in the community talking about what this means and, uh, you know, a bunch of people kind of listening in and, and, and watching in a fishbowl kind of way. And that's, that's interesting in its own right. So that was, that, that was kind of fun to do. So uh, thanks, Dr. Chuck, for, uh, for turning on the mic and, and uh, you know, being, being as, as vocal as you were. I, th I think that was great. Um, I, I will say that I would bet you, and you know, maybe Dr. Chuck can, uh, you know, will have something to say about this by way of closing. Uh, I would bet you that our competitors don't do this; that they don't, uh, they don't, uh, that they're they're not introspective in this way. I mean, one of the one of the measures was we don't pause to reflect, you know, and I think that we don't do that as often as we should. But I do think that this particular piece of work, you know, these these findings, these conversations are the kind of reflection that we need to have. And it may be that, you know, these six data points don't produce something as actionable as we had hoped, but nonetheless, we're, we're considering them and thinking really hard. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would offer that as, a, as, you know, a place where I, where I, I stand on this. Um, anyone else want to offer any final words before we break? We're a little bit over time. So I would say, let's, let's take 60 seconds. Anyone who has a last thought, feel free to share. Yeah, I mean, Martin notes that a non-open product would be talking about their solely about their role in the marketplace, you know, and, and uh, the Lake House is making a similar point. All right, last call for comments before we break. I'm cutting deeply into your 10 minutes of break time, and I apologize for that. Our competitors, yeah. All right, let's call it there. Um, thank you guys for a really good conversation. I am turning off the recording.